Hello and welcome to worship for this February the 20th and 21st of 2021. It's the first Sunday of Lent. For thousands of years, indigenous people have lived in this land on their own country. Their relationship with the land is at the center of their lives and we acknowledge the past and present generations of Beothic and Mi'kmaq people of this island and the Innu and Inuit people of Labrador and their stewardship of this, these lands throughout the ages. This is a safe place for all people to worship, regardless of race, creed, age, ability, cultural background, nationality, sexual orientation, or gender identity. From season to season, this world through its phases shows love has no dearth. This love is for sharing, to nurture well-being, to echo God's call. So let us celebrate the richness and diversity of life. In this place of friendship, there is freedom. Let this light we kindle go before us, strong in hope, wide in goodwill, inviting the day to come. For everything there is a season, and a time for every matter under heaven. There are times when we are filled with joy and hope, and other times when we are sad and scared. There are times when we laugh, and times when we weep. There are times when we are confident and strong, and times when we are unsure and weak. In every season, God promises to be with us. When we are tempted to despair, turn us back to this enduring promise and let us pray. Loving and Holy One, as we enter into this season of Lent, we consider what it means to be tempted. We hear your words of faithful promise, 
but are tempted not to believe. We listen to voices of the crowd and the false promises of advertising. We cannot quiet our minds or our living long enough to be aware of your presence. Yet you invite us to pause in the green pastures and visit the still and st the waters. Walk with us this Lenten journey and guide us with light and with love. Amen. Whether you take what is written in the Bible as fact, metaphor, myth, or story, listen to these words now for the meaning they hold for you on this day. The first reading comes from the book of Genesis, chapter 9, verses 8 through 17. Then God spoke to Noah and his sons, I'm setting up my covenant with you, including your children who will come after you along with everything alive around you, birds, farm animals, wild animals, that come out of the ship with you. I'm setting up my covenant with you that never again will everything living be destroyed by floodwaters. No, never again will a flood destroy the earth. God continued, This is the sign of the covenant I am making between me and you and everything living around you and everyone living after you. I'm putting my rainbow in the clouds, a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. From now on, when I form a cloud over the earth and the rainbow appears in the cloud, I'll remember my covenant between me and you and everything living, that never again will floodwaters destroy all life. When the rainbow appears in the cloud, I'll see it 
and remember the eternal covenant between God and everything living, every last living creature on earth. And God said, This is the sign of the covenant that I've set up between me and everything living on earth. The second reading comes from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verses 9 through 15. And if you've been with me through Advent, you've heard part of this before. <laughs> At this time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. The moment he came out of the water, he saw the sky split open and God's Spirit looking like a dove, come down on him. Along with the spirit, a voice, you are my son, chosen and marked by my love, pride of my life. At once, the same spirit pushed Jesus out into the wild. For 40 wilderness days and night, he was tested by Satan. Wild animals were his companions and angels took care of him. After John was arrested, Jesus went to Galilee, preaching the message of God. Time's up. God's kingdom is here. Change your life and believe the message. May these words help us to learn from the past and listen to God's words today. Well, Lent is a time of creative transformation. Whether, be, whether it be through water, rainbows, or wilderness exile, we are called to transform in the 40 days of Lent. This transformation is brought about by letting go of the things that keep us from experiencing God's presence in our lives and awakening to God's new possibilities for us and our communities. We need to repent, change direction, and move from behaviors which erect barriers and drain energy to life-supporting actions and attitudes. I would hazard a guess that most of us do not expect the destruction of the earth through divine activity such as a flood. We are fully aware of the precarious nature of our world politically, economically, and ecologically. As in the Iron Maiden song, the doomsday clock stands at two minutes to midnight. We hopefully recognize the destructiveness of our own actions, unlike the people in the story of Noah, who failed to change their ways and suffered the consequences. Those people laughed at and ignored Noah, the prophet of God. Are we turning deaf ears to the likes of Dr. David Suzuki and our own fisheries biologist, warning of pollution in the oceans, land, and air? In the first chapter of Genesis, God gives humans dominion over the created world. By chapter 9, things have gone so wrong with that plan that the character of God destroys the world and its creatures providing safety for just a small number of humans and animals. Despite the destruction, God makes a covenant with all, cre with all creation, embracing humans and non-humans. A covenant is a contract between two parties, which usually stipulates terms and conditions for each side. This covenant between God and creation has no terms for creation to follow. God, on the other hand, promises to never again destroy the earth by flood. God even sets a sign in the clouds, the rainbow, to remind God, not creation, of this covenant. During Lent and beyond, we need to hear and respond to our own self-destructive behaviors and recognize our complicity in social and economic injustices and ecological destruction at home and globally. Our transformation must go beyond self-interest to provide wholeness for humankind and non-human cre creation in all its wondrous and threatened diversity. Lent 
is also associated with the story of the Jewish Galilean sage Yeshua, or as we know him, Jesus, and his 40-day stay or testing in the desert wilderness. The story says it happened following his baptism at the beginning of his pub brief public activity in the northwestern corner of the Galilee in the early Roman Empire sometime between the years 26 and 36 of the Common Era. Today is the writing of Marx. It's Marx's big chance to introduce Jesus of Nazareth. And what do we get? Three paragraphs totaling 130 words covering Jesus' baptism, temptations, and the outline of social reform. No birth narrative, no genealogy, just the sudden appearance of Jesus at the Jordan being baptized by John. His parentage and whereabouts before this event hold no concern for the writer of Mark. We tend to think of baptism as a particularly Christian practice, but baptism had been practiced in the Jewish culture as a symbolic way of bringing outsiders into the Jewish faith. But Jesus was a Jew why would he need to be baptized? Well, John was proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And what did Jesus have to repent? And then there is this whole issue of superiority. The idea of John baptizing Jesus seems to make John superior and Jesus sinful. But those are questions for another day. Following his baptism, the Spirit immediately drives Jesus into the wilderness or the desert. Certainly by our experience of wilderness, the wilderness of Galilee would have been a desert, rocky, dusty, and dry, with little growing there. In godly play, we introduce the desert as a dangerous place a place where very little grows, there are few animals, and people only enter it if they really have to. Australian poet Wendy Ross Baker writes in her poem, Wilderness. Wilderness is wide, bare rocks are there, no place to hide, exposed to all the elements from every side. Most people see the desert as a place lacking the life forms that are significant to them. She continues, Wilderness holds fear of danger seen, unseen. From far and near, threatening sounds and shadows are everywhere. But for those who live in the desert, it has a compelling fasc fascination as a place vibrant with life. Wilderness can bloom. Creative power is there. Trees and plants find room. Signs that life can flourish. Death be overcome. Jesus goes into the wilderness and there encounters Satan, the wicked opponent, the adversary. Mark doesn't offer any clue as to why this experience. Mark just leaves us guessing. The wilderness was an important place in Israel's history. It was a place of testing, a place where Israel's heroes discerned the presentness and promise of God. Was this the intent of the wilderness time? To be a time for Jesus to discover the presentness of God and in the most unlikely of places? A time to awaken, struggle, and ultimately decide on his way forward in his public ministry? New Zealand theologian Ian Cairns writes, Part of our being human is that life constantly calls us to decide whether we will choose a line of action which, as far as we can see, serves the wider human good, or one that is selfishly geared to our immediate individual advantage. 
In other gospel accounts of this time in the desert, we hear of Satan offering temptations which were of a selfish nature. Was this the wilderness struggle to choose the line of action, human or self-greed? Finally, Jesus' wilderness retreat ends and he is lured from the silence of the desert to the cacophony of human need. The contemplative time is balanced by action. Introspection gives birth to outreach as Jesus goes public. Lent is a very real time where we can once again seek out our present seek out the presentness of the sacred, lurking in the most unlikely of places, waiting to be uncovered, found and embraced. It can be a time when, in positive and in intentional ways, our focused actions can enable others to flourish. When our selfless actions seep into the world, encouraging and giving fresh heart to those around us and strengthening the bonds of community. The desert is a place where one does not expect to find life, but the desert is a spiritual place, a place of discovery and hidden beauty. May we each find time to visit our desert place this Lent and be transformed. Let us pray. And today's prayer is based on a poem by Roger Courtney called Facing the Barren Desert. Holy One, today, like Jesus, may we be facing a barren desert, a desert of COVID, lockdowns, and isolation. We may be tempted to do the wrong thing, to do something selfish, to do something hurtful, or perhaps we have become lost, not sure which way to turn in our lives. The desert sand gives us no help in this bleak moment. We need to reach deep into ourselves to find the sacred spark that represents all that is best in us, which knows who we really are and who we can be and remind ourselves that we are here to share the spirit of life and love with others to blossom in the desert or the concrete of the city and help others to blossom too travel with us in our desert journeys help us so god that we might help others in the love of the Creator, in the name of the Healer, and in the life of the Holy Spirit that is all and with all, we pray the Abba Prayer, which is also written by Roger Courtney in the spirit of the Lord's Prayer. And if you prefer to pray the Lord's Prayer, please do so. Great divine spirit of love that is at the core of everything and from which all life flows, we acknowledge your healing and transforming power. May the spirit of unconditional love and forgiveness flow through each of us and enable the realm of love to spread throughout the world. Like the flowers in the fields, ensure that we have the basics we need to live and give us the love and commitment to ensure that others have what they need also. Give us the courage to acknowledge when we have done wrong, to seek forgiveness from those we have hurt, and to forgive those who have hurt us, so that we may be reconciled. We acknowledge the power of self-giving love to transform individual hearts and the world. We recommend ourselves to the unconditional love of others and the work of justice and peace. Amen.
is stronger my love is stronger than your fear don't be afraid my love is stronger and Time has now come for us to leave this sacred place. As we do, may we embrace the challenges of our lives and our world. Be safe, wash your hands, stay in your bubble, and wear your masks. This is your way to love your neighbor as yourself. We go from this time to our daily journey through life. As we do, may we fashion relationships of inclusion and reconciliation and a lifestyle that loves and treats people and the earth gently. So go and know that our hearts are always in a holy place, for we are always connected to one another. And know that deep down, our hearts beat in one universal ry rhythm. May we each find the sacred space to hear it. Amen. <laughs>